Hello, it is 12 noon in Athens. It's 5 p.m. in Bangkok. I'm Onita Rajpal. And I'm Zane Virgil. You're watching CNN, the world's news leader, and this is World One Live from London. In just a few weeks from now, Greece could be bankrupt without a government and on its way out of the euro, and economies in Europe and beyond could be tipped into a new slump. Those are the possible consequences of a Greek referendum on its uh, financial bailout announced by Prime Minister George Papandreou to the astonishment of his European neighbours. Less than a week ago, the world was congratulating Eurozone leaders on hammering out a plan to ease their debt crisis. But Mr. Papandreou said on Monday the Greek people must have the chance to accept or reject the measures, including a 50% debt write-off. Now faces more months of economic uncertainty, which creates a major headache for the financial markets. There's already been a very negative reaction on Wall Street and in Asia. And here in Europe, shares in Athens fell more than 6% at the start of trade. We want to bring in journalist Alinda Lapopolo, who uh, joins us now via Skype from Athens. And Alinda, there will be many in Europe, especially some other Eurozone leaders, who will be asking and wondering, what is Mr. Papandreou playing at? Well, uh, Papandreou has seen that uh, he and his government don't really have the support to implement the measures that uh, the new EU bailout foresees. I guess I'm just a bit confused, or maybe I'm failing to miss the point here, in terms of, uh, we understand that these austerity measures and the, the deal that comes along with this bailout uh, deal is that it, there, there will be strict changes and it will not bear well for Greeks. Granted, that's what we understand, but what other option is there? Well, at the moment, if we look at the referendum, a, a no vote would break immediately between Greece and its lenders who have demanded these uh, changes. Uh, in there in Athens, thank you so much. Find work struggling to hang on to hope. One group of people in Italy seems to be bearing the brunt of the Eurozone crisis, and that's the young. Figures uh, out this week show youth unemployment is on the rise, with more than one in four Italians under 25 unable to find a job. CNN's Paula Newton has their story. As Europe faces uncertain times ahead, the reaction of the stock market has been hogging the headlines. But there's more at stake than share prices as the economic gloom refuses to lift. And that's well understood by the businesses that form the backbone of Europe's biggest economy, as Fred Pleiken reports. Even in these uncertain economic times, business is booming at Wolfram Office Communication, a mid-sized company in Berlin that provides printers and office software. But we want to switch gears here on World One and bring you up to date on some of the stories that we're talking about today, starting with a little quiz question. What costs $10 million and lasts 72 days? Kim Kardashian's marriage. The woman famous for being famous has filed for divorce less than three months after her wedding to basketball player Chris Humphreys. The news sparked a flurry of activity on Twitter under the hashtag things longer than Kim's marriage. Hmm. Now, how do you bring the world's most famous detective back from the dead? Elementary, my dear Watson. Just write a new Sherlock Holmes book. Get the thumbs up from the original author's estate and pretend it's a lost manuscript recently unearthed. Well, that's what author Anthony Horowitz did at any rate. The House of Silk is a new Sherlock Holmes book based on Arthur Conan Doyle's uh, original stories. In it, Dr. Watson's character recounts uh, a missing case considered to be too monstrous and too shocking to be published during the detective's lifetime. And do you want to know... What doesn't cost peanuts? Peanuts, yeah, the nut whose name has become synonymous with cheapness is no longer anything of the kind. One of the worst harvests in decades has uh, pushed up prices, forcing big names like Kraft to raise the cost of peanut butter by 40%. Same. Juanita, you're watching World One live from London. That referendum has knocked a lot of the recent optimism out of the stock markets. European shares nosedived at the start of trade this session. We want to find out more about the markets with Louise Cooper, an analyst at the brokerage BGC Partners. Louise, it's not looking good. I'm just seeing here some, uh, some from the reports from the wire saying the Italian stock market is down 5%. It's all down at the start of trade. Uh, and I guess it all comes down to this uh, lack of confidence in what the Greek government is doing. Yes, the, the rally we saw at the end of last week on the back of this pretty limited Brussels communique, I read all 11 pages of it and I couldn't see why equity markets were so Cooper strong. Their BGC Partners here in London, thank you so much. It's one of the world's most famous horse races, but in 151 years, the Melbourne Cup 
can have had a more exciting finish than it did today. Don Riddell joins us now with more details. It was ah. incredible. Thanks very much. Uh, it is known as the race that stops a nation, and the Melbourne Cup had all of Australia holding its breath earlier today. Well, lots in the of drama and sports, Don. Thank you very all much. Right. You're watching World One Live from London. It was quickly dubbed the sexy spy. Anna Chapman became a household name when the FBI named her as a suspected Russian secret agent. Now, newly declassified images from Operation Ghost Stories show Chapman in a New York coffee shop meeting an undercover FBI who agent. Who are these 10 spies? Well, mostly they claim to be married couples living fairly ordinary suburban lives. Let's introduce you to them. Let's start here. Well, this is who they are, actually. Um, Richard and Cynthia Murphy. This is the first couple there. They're from Montclair, New Jersey, parents of two young children. Neighbors thought she was a financial consultant and he was a stay-at-home dad. Then we bring you uh, Michael Zatoli and Patricia Mills of Arlington, Virginia. Those two there. Uh, also parents of two small children. They had earlier earned business degrees in Seattle. Then we have uh, Donald Hethfield and his wife Tracy Foley of Cambridge, Massachusetts. They were parents of uh, two teenage boys. Another couple also known as these Russian spies, Juan Lazaro, uh, was really Mikhail Vasenkov, married to journalist Vicky Palaez, a Peruvian national. They have a teenage son. And finally, two people who use their own names and operated as individuals, not a married couple, Mikhail Semenko and Anna Chapman. Zane? So you're watching World One live from London. I'm Zane Burge. I'm Juanita Rajpal. Thank you for joining us. We'll update you with the main news at the top of the hour. You're watching CNN.